Hi everyone, I'm Dan Fan, and this is Man Fan, and we <laughs> made a comic! Or I guess are in the process of making a comic. It's like yeah. about halfway done right now. First comic that I'm going to be doing all the art for and leaving the writing up to the fantasy expert over here. And it's called Horizon Quest. It's about a druid who joins a party of adventurers. So I guess my inspiration is that it's kind of the comic I've always wanted to read started off in fantasy with uh, the Elder Scrolls Oblivion and that game is like super super great and you get to explore all this stuff but there's this kind of creeping sense of loneliness because there's no real good companions and it, when you do get companions they're kind of quiet so then from Oblivion I heard about Dungeons and Dragons and then I looked into that and that was really cool that uh, the whole concept of a, a party of adventures like lots of these uh, these friends that were all specialists in one area and then deficient in another all kind of coming together to cover each other's flaws and make this really like cohesive uh party this like really effective unit my comic book shop there was a dungeons and dragons comic and i was like oh perfect this is going to be the best comic ever read i've right? also read a, a few of the dungeons <laughs> and dragons comics so i pick it up <laughs> and i start flipping through it and like everything's wrong right like it's bad it's terrible the rogue is like a really bad person and is actively trying to steal from them and it's like in real life, if you were running a Dungeons and Dragons game and the rogue did that, everyone would be like, "Well, we're gonna kill him. We're gonna we're, we're gonna reroll a new character, and we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna see how that one goes." I asked the the guy who owns the comic shop. I'm like, What's, "What happened? Why is it sh why is it bad?" And this like this is like official. Like they know about like Dungeons and Dragons. Why do they make this comic? And then they were like, "Oh, well, they don't want it to be generic, right? They don't want it to be like the the, the, the you know regular knight kills a dragon." I was like. Which one's the one with the knight killing the dragon? Let me read that one. <laughs> Please, name a single story where a knight kills a dragon and don't say Sleeping Beauty. That's one. You need at least two for it to, for it to be generic. And you saw a lot of stuff, like Western media in general, everyone's like really afraid of fantastical concepts. Like magic has to have some like horrible drawback, like it drains your life force or something. Or lots of like really, really low fantasy stuff. And um, and then you go to like J Japan and then they're, they're not afraid at all, but then it starts to get into the well, it's like all isekais in yeah, Japan, exactly. basically. It's like, this Nothing is literally... <laughs> fantasy except for isekai. Everyone is from the modern world, yeah. going into a fantasy world, <laughs> every and it has one. video game mechanics yeah. every single time. Even if it's, even even if it isn't an isekai, they, they still use like super hardcore video game mechanics to explain how stuff is working, yeah. to define the magic system. I wanted the same feeling of adventure I got from playing Oblivion and then the feeling of friendship and like companionship and this like really strong bond of like uh, cooperation that I got from Dungeons and Dragons. And there wasn't really any comics that did that. There were just so many like empty campfires that were used by bandits that just sit empty after you kill all the bandits and you're just like, man, it would be cool to have an adventuring party, a bunch of, you know, friends that all have specializations and stuff to sit around the campfire and I think a combination of just fear of something being quote-unquote generic or fear of high fantasy and stuff it limits what people can do well, I always say it doesn't yeah. really matter if something is cliche or tropish so long as you're doing it right so long as you're doing it really well there's so many stories that try to do the same type of story but how many of them are actually good only a few maybe one of it's, that type of story that's like decent I guess it's weird to say but there's like a fear of doing something normal and then there's also a fear of doing something normal you know <laughs> like there's a fear of the generic knight slays a dragon and then there's a fear of like doing something too like doing something too out there and then having it be uh uh, you know, oh, that's too fantastical, like there's too much mm. magic or something. I just thought it'd be better, like, why not just use good ideas and make a good story? Yeah, why don't we like, just make good stories <laughs> yeah, Why now? not just have it be good? Come on, Marvel, DC, you know? Dungeons and Dragons, why don't you just make good stuff? <laughs> yeah, why What's not, wrong why not with just it? have it be good? I mean, I guess we'll have to do it, since <laughs> you won't. <laughs> We've got a, a pixie who controls, who, who 
moves around the world by controlling it, uh, an animated suit of armor using yes, like some... Yes, yes, it's like a mech, but fantasy. Yeah, also really enjoyed divorcing classes from their standard archetype. Like, uh, a wizard is typically versatile, having lots of variety in their spells, and so I really enjoyed that, that character from uh, Konosuba. Konosuba just like, explosion magic. Yeah, because for years I was like, why... Why do I need all of these? Like when I when I roll a, a wizard in Dungeons and Dragons, it's like this is ridiculous how much versatility I have. Like, I, I can you imagine? Like, was everybody this prepared? Like, <laughs> if I was a wizard, I would just get one type of spell. I've always really liked that concept. Um, when I played Guild Wars, there was a class, uh, the Elementalist, and then it, I never saw it in like another game for years. But it's essentially just the AOE spells and like the elemental magic. And so I thought it would be really interesting to attach that to a personality of, uh, of, of someone like a little bit more uh, like wild, like a barbarian, right? I remember reading the, the description of the druid class and uh, it was like, oh, when, they, when people study this, uh, this magical arts, they get like a great love for nature. I remember thinking, like, how do you know? Like, I, I was, like, thinking, like, the guy who was writing the book, like, he's not quoting a druid when he says that. You know, it's like, who, who's this guy? <laughs> how does he know that? <laughs> like, how do you know they don't hate their job? Like, you know? I guess that's kind of uh, the idea behind Genwin is he's, like, yeah. a druid, but he doesn't really have a love of animals or anything. Yeah, and that, not to be, like, a, a fear of the, uh, the generic, but, like, it kind of could be interesting to uh, just be unshackled and explore all sorts of stuff. Is kind of what I think. I just thought it'd be interesting to to view a, a druid's powers on someone who isn't really doing anything for the best interest of the plants or the animals. <laughs> right, right. He's much more practical and like where a tree should be or where uh, this should be or like a mechanical mind. Type yeah, thing. and I, I thought that was kind of like what if a wizard just had druid powers, you know? Another concept that I, I feel like is worth talking about is um, the uh, concept of fantasy races where it's so, so normal for uh, someone to write fantasy races as just humans plus like so <laughs> like what if humans <laughs> were better so it's like okay so if it's a so, so like the, their mentality is like if it's a sentient race it must have every quality of a human now we're going to add this stuff and that's <laughs> not really how it should work all of the traits that humans have are like incredible you know we have guns <laughs> guns so whenever they show a fantasy race they're like they're way smarter than people it's like Clearly not. Have you seen real people? Have you seen those gun things? <laughs> Fucking wild. F-18s? Dude, they Yeah, why fly? don't they have tanks? Huh? It's like, oh man, you know, humans not as good as dragons. It's like, have you seen planes, man? <laughs> when we were doing a uh, fantasy party, I thought it would be good to have uh, an elf in there. Because I've had, I've always had a lot of like ideas for what to do with elves to make them sort of uh, More unique. Balanced. Yeah, unique, but also <laughs> balanced. And, I really loved in Lord of the Rings how Legolas is like walking on top of the snow and I was like what if you really expanded on that weight thing and you just made it kind of a magical lightness like how that changes how you go around and then also uh, the whole endurance thing where like humans have more endurance than like every creature on the planet yeah pretty yeah pretty much every creature on the planet and um, that's never like talked about in fantasy at all like if anything they then add creatures that have more endurance than humans but they never really do creatures that have less it's always like this i mean especially now with like modern dnd they're like oh you can't have any bad races except for humans make elves interesting and cool while not just pretending like humans are terrible this is uh, a standalone issue and hopefully the first of of many story of a slightly crestfallen druid who goes and finds himself a adventuring party right now the mailing list is live if you'd like news and updates on this comic please by all means check the description check the pinned comments down below and you'll be notified when we launch on april 6th we'll also be launching the comic with other fun goodies that will be exclusive so you'll want to you'll want to be checking that out so and of cool. course the, the comics will be signed by both of us yeah so you my, get double signed my signature is horrible <laughs> my signature is nice <laughs>
Yeah. Some people try to make me uh, feel better about my signature by saying like, oh, well, at least it's unique. And I was like, it's not unique. It looks completely different and horrible every time. So no one can even like, you know, e even if I was like super famous and whatever, and, you know, you take it to an appraiser and they're like, no idea. Every I don't single, know who this person is. Every single signature of this guy, it's, you know, it's different and bad. If I do a really bad job signing your comic, I'm, I'm not going to cross it out. I'm just going to... I'm just gonna write I tried underneath it. Those Beautiful. will be the extra rare books, the ones that say I tried underneath your signature. Be on the lookout for that, and uh, check my community page every now and then, because I will be posting news and updates as they come. Thank you guys for watching, thank you guys for checking out this comic, and we'll see you next time.